my gorgeous, beautiful, wonderful queen bees. It is your girl Amanda, the buzzed artist. Welcome back to my channel, a place where you can let loose and just have fun with your acrylic paint. People, it's a fall month and we got so much fun Halloween and fall inspired tutorials coming your way. And this week, I'm going to be showing you how to paint your very own whoa, as I almost knock over my lighting, scarecrow painting. This is gonna be so much fun and I know it's gonna get you into the Halloween fall mood. All right, grab your supplies and come meet me. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this. Yeah. <laughs> everybody. Paints we're going to be using for the scarecrow scene are the following. We're going to be using some blue, red, yellow, white, and some black. And we are also going to be using three brushes. We got our three quarter inch flat wash brush. We got our number 10 shader brush. And for those of you that are not too comfortable with using your shader, you can go ahead and use a detail zero brush. And I also recommend having a sharpie on hand. And I also have some canvas paper which I taped onto some cardboard so that it won't warp while we're working on it. Let's get painting. So first things first, I'm going to apply a light white wash of acrylic on top of this just so we can get our canvas lubed up. This is actually something that I saw on um, a Bob Ross tutorial and I decided to give it a try on one of my paintings and I actually liked the end effect of it so I decided, hey, you know what? Let's uh... Let's keep, let's keep using this. What we're gonna work on now is our sky. I'm kind of thinking autumn colors. So we got some reds and some orangey, yellow, uh, maybe some tinges of violet. I'm gonna take my brush, my three quarter inch, and I'm going to just take some red. Okay. And I'm also gonna take some black, not too much. See how little black I took, just a little. And then I'm gonna mix that with the red. So you got this nice, nice cranberry. All I'm gonna do, is go to my sky, which is going to be this portion here, and just start playing. And I'm just working mainly on the edges, and I'm, I'm constantly reapplying. So I, you know, I just did one layer, I just went back in and added a second. But basically, I want to get a nice coverage and I'm not afraid to go towards the center at this point because right now I just want to lay down some color. All right. Okay. That's it. Nothing too crazy. Okay. Next we're going to go in now and add in just some red. So I'm going to go in cleaning up my brush and I'm just going to add a little bit of red. I didn't mix it with anything else, just red. Okay. And I'm going to go, now add that in, and I'm going to kind of emanate it towards the inside. And I'm also bringing it out a little bit, going into that darker red that we made earlier. Now, you can already see that um, some of my black didn't really go through with the, with the cranberry red we made earlier. So I'm going to go back in and add a little bit of black, and then just go ahead and work on darkening those areas. Now, if you remember, I made a video about what blending is all about, and um, one of the major facets of blending is that while your paint is still wet, that's when you're gonna get the best blend. So that's why I'm kind of working a little quick on this part, because I wanna make sure that my paint is still nice and wet and ready to mingle with all the other colors that I'm laying down, right? So I go in with, with the darker color again, just to highlight the fact that this is on the, on the outer edge of our painting. Okay, I'm gonna just rinse my brush, go back in with just straight up red this time, and I'm just gonna bring that back out right here, see? So it's kind of this cool effect. Now that I added in some of my red, I wanna go and bring orange in. So I'm gonna take some, some yellow, just like so, and I'm gonna mix it into the red. Okay, so you're gonna start to make this like orange color. I'm gonna go now to a little more towards the center of where we're gonna make our sky. And now I'm adding in that orange. Now again, people, my brush and my uh, paint that I laid down previous is wet. So it's creating this beautiful blending surface for me. And again, if you feel like you lost certain elements of your painting, from just all the, the colors that you were laying down, 
you can always go back in. Now's the opportunity because your paint is nice and wet. You got this nice gradient that we just laid down. Isn't that really neat? I'm, I wanna go back in with a little bit of red. Again, I just like to play with my colors a little bit. So I'm, I just went in straight up red and went back in and played and playing with the border here where my colors are meeting together with that darker violet, okay? I'm not afraid to play, people. I'm not afraid to play here because, you know what? You got nothing to lose. And also, that's the whole thing about blending. You want to take the risk. You want to take the risk and see how far you can stretch your colors out. I'm actually pretty happy with this. This looks really, really neat so far. Next, what I'm going to do, we're going to make the point in the sunset here that is truly radiating out. Now, because this is a light source, you want to go with a light color. Therefore, you want to go with a white, okay? So I'm taking some white and I'm adding a little bit of yellow, just a little, just a little yellow, adding it to my palette, okay? And then I'm gonna go to the center here. And I'm kind of doing this in um, crisscross X motions, kind of like how Bob Ross does it a little bit and I'm spreading the color out and emanating it out like so. Okay, so I'm not just containing that color in one little area and calling it done. It's, I'm trying to spread it out. My paint is still wet from the previous layers, right? So this is the perfect time for me to play. All right, now I'm gonna go back in now, maybe with just a little more white this time, okay? I really wanna capture that there is a light source here, that there is a very, very bright area, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go again in with white. Okay. Now, do you already kind of see, it's, you already see that essence that this is a setting sun, right? And, and it looks really, really cool as, as of, you know, right here. And kind of look, I'm looking into the camera right now. It does actually look really awesome. Okay, I'm spreading out the color a little bit too. Why not? Okay. We're going to let that, we're going to let that dry for a little while. And while that's drying, I wanna go and start making the landscape that's down here. So once again, I just took my three quarter inch flat wash brush and gave it a rinse. And we're gonna go in now and make the landscape. Now, the landscape is very similar to how we did the night sky, right? Or how we did the setting sun sky. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some red, okay? I'm gonna add a little bit of black like we did before. Okay, kind of like nice, cranberry and this time around I'm gonna use a lot of horizontal strokes and I'm using my brush to kind of just help me not use a lot of paint in this I just want to carry it out okay gorgeous I'm not filling the whole thing in just the sides And next, we're gonna go in with some yellow, okay? So I'm just taking some yellow. And because my paint is still wet, we should start to see a blend happening here. Okay, we're seeing, we're seeing a little bit, we're seeing something, something. How neat is that, right? You didn't have to do much. Did not have to do much. Okay. Now I do want more of orange, right? So I want to take my yellow, okay? And we're gonna go and make that orange color again. So I'm gonna take yellow, take some red, just combine those two colors together. And then, and I'll just spray that color out. Okay, and I did lose some of that darker red. I'm gonna go put that back in. Okay, no big deal. Once again, recap, that's red and black. And I'm just adding that back in, okay? And my brush, my paint, everything is still nice and wet. So I can do this. I can, I have this perfect opportunity to blend and to just play with my colors. And I'm, I'm taking my brush and I'm not really pressing down too, too hard on it. And I'm also not, I don't have a lot of paint on my brush. You'll notice it's just barely covered. So 
I'm just making sure just to primarily get the edges. Again, I'm going to go and add a bit more orange, maybe just a tad, a, a little, little bit of white just to pale it, pale it down a little. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Ah, I love it. Okay. So I'm going to give my brush a nice, nice rinse. I'm going to make some mountains kind of in the background here. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna take our three quarter inch and we're gonna make a dark violet. So I'm gonna take a little bit of blue. We don't need that much blue in this. So I'm gonna take some blue and red, okay? Cause red and blue make violet. Okay, so you're gonna get this nice like violet color. I'm also using a saran, uh, saran wrap so that I don't have to always be cleaning my palette all the time because I ain't got time for that. All right, so I'm gonna go to the point where we have our horizon line so you can clearly see where the sky ended and the land began. And that's where I'm gonna concentrate my brush. So using the tip, I'm just going to make a line. Just like so. Okay, no big deal. Pretty simple, pretty easy. And now what I'm gonna do is thicken up the line and I wanna bring I want to start to show a little bit of the range, so I'm, I'm adding thickness. So I'm just like adding in a plateau here, maybe like another little little bump right there. Think valleys, okay? You want like you want some humps, you want some valleys. You just want to show that there is something in the distance, okay? That there is some sort of spatial awareness happening in this picture. Okay, neato. I'm gonna give my brush a light rinse. Okay, now I'm going to dry my brush out, dry it out. I was just taking my, my cloth and taking all the moisture out of my brush, okay? Because what I want to do now is just feather the blend of the bottom of the mountains here into the land. So I'm just taking my brush and just pulling the colors down, okay? I, I'm doing this very, very lightly on my brush. I don't want to, I don't really want to take that much paint off, but I want to show that, you know, there, there is this expanse um, and it, it, it's just blending into the background so cool, so nicely. All right. Love it. This is a little, it's a little feathering trick. It's just something that, um, you know, you learn along the way of like what natural landscape would look like. It's all blended colors and that's really what makes it very precious and cool. Okay, now that the sky is pretty much dry, I wanna go back in once more and really establish that there's a sun there. So I wanna take some white and I'm making sure I don't have too, too much paint on my brush. I don't want too much. And I'm just going to add that white in, okay? And I'm just gonna emanate it out like so. And I'm gonna use my, my finger just to help blend those little parts in there, okay? And it's okay to cheat, like, it's not even cheating really, you're just, you're just playing with everything you have in, in your arsenal, right? You're allowed to finger paint people, okay? You are totally allowed to do that, okay? You don't need permission from everybody around you to do that, okay? Whatever it takes for you to achieve that look. Okay, cool. So I think we've established some sort of sun. So I just cleaned my brush. We're gonna put that away now because what we're gonna start doing next is the fun parts. We're gonna to start to establish the um, fence that's in this area here, some of the plant life, as well as our scarecrow, okay? So that's the whole part of fall month, right? We wanna add some autumn-like themes. So first things first. So if you want to, you can uh, put your brushes down, grab your Sharpie and continue on with this stuff. I'm gonna do kind of half and half. So I'm going to take my number 10 shader brush and I'm going to, this time, I'm gonna dip it in some water, get it nice and wet, okay? So now the point of this whole part going forward is that you want a nice wet brush and it's gonna be dipped in black paint, but you always wanna make sure your, your brush is nicely lubricated because that's gonna help you get these really nice crisp lines. So I'm gonna dip it in some black. 
Okay, so not too much, just a little. I'm gonna go to the right portion here. So the right portion, I wanna put some sort of fence, okay? So I'm gonna take my brush, tip side down, and I'm going to just make a line going down like so. And I think I wanna make it that, that tall. You can vary it to whatever your heart desires, but I'm kinda thinking I like it like this right here, okay? And uh, we're going to make the post of the fence here, so I'm just gonna take my brush, just turn it horizontally, and bring it out like so. Ta-da! See guys, nothing crazy, really. It's really nothing crazy, okay? And I'm gonna do the second post. Now, what's really cool about this is that the the more crooked it looks, the better, okay? This is like a nice rustic farm kind of aesthetic, right? So we wanna, we wanna make it nice and scraggly. We don't want the lines to be perfectly straight. That works to our advantage because, you know, these hands do shake, right? <laughs> it's very common. Okay? I'm not looking for perfection here. Okay. Beautiful. Nice. Next, I'm going to move on to my Sharpie, and I'm going to start to put in our Scarecrow. I'm gonna cap up my marker. I'm gonna go back in with my number 10 shader, or you can go in with your number zero detail round brush for this, because if you're feeling like you're a little shaky, you don't need to use as big a brush that I'm using. But I'm just gonna fill that in with the black. So we just established our Scarecrow. I'm really digging him. I think he's adorable. I think he looks great as a silhouette. We're going to be adding in some more details, aka like all the corn silhouettes and the wheat grass that's flowing from the bottom here. So um, I'm, I'm going to go back and forth. I'm going to show you one method, aka how to paint on the, the corn and all that, but I'm going to use my Sharpie for the rest because to me it's a little easier. Using my number 10 shader brush, I'm gonna make sure it's nice and wet and I'm gonna just dip it in some black, okay? We're gonna be dealing with black from here on out because it's all, it's all silhouette. So I got my black nicely coated and uh, I'm gonna go right around here somewhere, I think. Um, so I'm gonna take my brush, tip side to the, to the paper, I'm gonna move my brush up. Now again, the reason why I say uh, you wanna have a nice wet brush is because it almost acts like an ink if you have a nice wet brush. And that's what you wanna go for, you need to get these nice crisp lines. Okay? So I got, I, got a, I got a nice line here. I'm gonna make it tilt a little bit. And so that's the uh, first part of our stock of our corn, okay? And what I'm gonna do next is I wanna make the leaf. So I'm gonna make a branch coming out like this. Again, using the tip of my brush, like that, and then it comes down like this, okay? And then I'm just gonna taper in that bottom portion of the branch, and I just kind of work on adding more and more to the, to the branch stock itself, okay? That's basically it. So I'm gonna keep on adding more, more of those leaves here. So again, it just comes out and then it comes down at an angle like that, okay? And then it just tapers into the stalk. That's basically how you make a stalk. It's very simple. If I want to make grass, again, I'm going to make sure you got a nice wet brush. And then I'm using the tip only. I go ahead and start making lines, okay? And again, I have to frequently wet my brush and re and like re dip into the black. So I want to make sure I want to make sure I'm really I really got a nice sharp edge, okay? Whatever's comfortable with you if you want to start from down and then up or up and then down, that's up to you. Really? Now, this field has like a varying number of the corn stalks as well as these leaves. So, I'm going to just leisurely just add as I see fit and I hope you do the same.
Now there's one more thing I want to add to this. There are some like, I, I guess they're like wheat, barley tops, and they're very furry. So I want to show you how to make that. I'm gonna take my um, number 10 shader. Again, make sure it's wet, add some black to it. I'm gonna go to some of the ends of the little uh, grass things that I've made. And uh, just to make the edge tip of that, I'm just going to make a line and then just turn my brush at varying angles until I kind of get something nice and furry on the ends, just like so, okay? These come in all different angles, so I'm just gonna make another one. And I'm just varying the angles of my brush, turning it uh, until, until I kind of got something nice and furry looking, okay? That's that's pretty much that's pretty much that. So I'm gonna just vary the number of types of um, I guess plant life that's gonna be in this picture. I'm also even using my sharpie to do the same kind of thing, just a little bit more of a finer tip to it. And that's kind of why I like to mix these medias a little bit. You get different looks, okay? Hope you guys enjoyed this scarecrow tutorial. I know I certainly had a lot of fun. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please be sure to give this a like and to subscribe to this channel. Hit that like button, you know what to do so you can see more fun art tutorials and Halloween related stuff from me to you in the future. All right, everybody, well, get ready because we got a whole lot more fall and Halloween inspired tutorials coming your way real soon. See you all next week. Bye.